back. We are here with Helen Erlen and talking about the Erlen syndrome so and how colored filtered lenses can literally change your life. Mm -hmm. In this podcast, I want to talk about traumatic brain injury. Um, so here at Amen Clinics, 40% of the patients we see have had a traumatic brain injury of significance mm -hmm, at some really. point in their past. It is an of epidemic proportions that no one knows. It's a major cause of psychiatric illness, anxiety, depression, temper problems, marital problems, domestic violence, and so on. And this is about 12 years ago, I started my NFL work and we've scanned and treated about 300 NFL players. And uh, I think half of them have the Erlen syndrome. It's amazing that if you don't inherit it, that having a car accident, having played a contact sport can often trigger headaches, irritability, reading problems, mm -hmm. depth perception issues. And you can imagine if you're an NFL player and you get whacked a lot in the head, but if it gives you depth perception problems, even just a smidge, it can cost you millions of dollars mm -hmm. in contracts because you're not going to be quite as good as you were. We actually have a number of hockey players as well because head trauma is very common in hockey. And when we figure out they have the Erlen syndrome, they'll actually tint their masks, uh, whatever color, and they become better hockey players. So talk about your experience with traumatic brain injury. Um, yeah, it's an interesting concept, and I guess one that's more prevalent. What I was thinking about as you were talking is it doesn't even have to be a sport that's necessarily thought of as a contact sport. Someone told me about synchronized swimming and how they get head injuries, and I went, what? What? And they go, well, they can be out of sync, and if they oh. go, hit heads. And they hit heads. Cheerleading is another one. Oh, yeah. One. Well, that one I <laughs> There was a cheerleader. We saw it all the time. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I always quote your quote that the only safe sport that Daniel Amen says is ping pong. Right? Unless you're a grandson who got hit by the <laughs> ping pong paddle. <laughs> anyway, but that again has become very prevalent. We've seen 500 military men and women. Um, and they all, it's not identified in the military because they're not bleeding to death. Um, I'm not sure they would want to know. Well, of course they is would that... want to know because they'd be more accurate. Yeah, but then they have to like actually help them. They, they had such a hard time even identifying TBI and PT, you know, PTSD. But then they have to actually do something about it. And it's hard to separate it out. So it was interesting for us because we do pre and post testing with everyone who we see who has had some type of head trauma. Um, to look at which factors then we can eliminate and which ones are resistant and are really related to um, PTSD um, and, and some brain injury that we're not touching because we're basically dealing with, as you know, the visual cortex. Um, so memory becomes resistant and one of the last ones to start to get better and has nothing to do what we do with. Um, and a lot of times the sleep issues um, stay a problem for them because of the anxiety and the depression. But anything that we've been typically dealing with is able to get better. And uh, so as I had mentioned before, they're able to now read before they could maybe get through a sentence to a half a page. So now they can be under fluorescent lighting without it triggering their headaches and their migraines, the nauseousness, the dizziness, um, the feelings of agitation and irritability, um, that feeling of, I just got to get out of here, fight or flight feelings. <laughs> so they can be under fluorescent lighting um, and they can think about going to school. They can think about going back to school, to having a career because they're going to be medically discharged. I see a lot now of car accident victims who um, it's again, it's not recognized by most neurologists, and so they've gone to they have no the, training, so yeah. it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, yeah. With the ophthalmologist, it's even worse. It's not, it doesn't exist, it's really shouldn't, you know, they totally dismiss So, is there it. a controversy among the ophthalmology field and the optometrists? Because I know they also get involved in visual training mm -hmm. and reading mm -hmm. and my 
optometrist who I adore. She's actually my cousin. She'd never heard of it, mm -hmm. but she's open-minded. So she went and learned about it right. and, and she trusts me. And if I say, look, I have thousands of people we've diagnosed over the last 25 years. It radically changes their life. Why wouldn't you want to just pay attention to it? And the treatment is so simple. Mm -hmm. It is simple as long as you know how to diagnose it. Um, you can't self-diagnose because you don't know what it's supposed to look like or how it's supposed to feel. So the key to this is two things. One is to have someone who's been trained, who's an expert at asking the questions the right way, to be able to pull exactly what's happening that shouldn't be happening. And then two, the recognition that everyone's brain is uniquely different, just like we have uniquely different fingerprints. So no one color works for every person. We've done runs on thousands and thousands and thousands. And you actually have some of the lenses here. Yeah, I brought some of the lenses Let along. Let me put one on and see. Yeah, this some one was wild. So it's sort of a pinkish lens. And when I put it on, it actually made things look more blue and crisp. So I thought that was pretty wild. And well, that actually makes me worse. Oh, yeah. see, that made me better. And that's a good point. We are that not the same, very, are we? We are not. In I wonder so if it many makes but everyone has a different conservative point. people more conservative. <laughs> Really? <laughs> no, it's getting back to what you said in terms of the brain's ability to wow, it's read just wild. The, the wavelengths of light that has Yeah, see the in ocean it. in the background on our, on our screen is like bluer to me. But the other thing that we do use before that is we want to make sure we don't put anybody in our own spectral filters unless they actually have the problem. Yeah, see, and that's the thing. So I'm looking at your patterns and so I'm looking around. Nothing else looks different to me. It just looks crisper. Does that make sense? But I don't see good. change in patterns. I don't see change in light. I don't see. So that's why the website, Erlen.com, has self-tests. So it's very easy to self-identify yourself or somebody if you have it. Um, and then we do a screening. And again, we're looking at setting them up to look at certain patterns that will quickly pull that individual with the symptoms, if they have Erlen, that occur at some point when they're reading and doing visually intensive activities. So they get to look at, and they have to count one of the columns, and then they have to keep looking at it. And it's that sustained looking. Oh, looking no, see, away. I can't do that. I have to put my finger on it. Right. There's no way I could sit there. I keep and... telling you, you have early. <laughs> no, no, I can't do. And I can't do it with numbers either. If there's a whole bunch of zeros or a whole bunch of ones, I have to put my number on, my finger on it. Well, one of the things that we do after we... Because they, then... they start to all run together. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So, <laughs> so we've had we a diagnostic... Use... Good. We can do a diagnostic right here. But yeah, and the funny thing is, I, I actually so. was really good in math in school, but 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 if numbers were a whole bunch of numbers together, I just had to like make sure that I wasn't well, mixing them up. Think about the kids who have problems doing that. So then at this point with the screening, we use different colored overlays to make sure that we can stop the ah, problem. I just thought of something. And it's still, that we can stop. And many times it's a combination of overlays mm. or a combination of densities. It just depends on the individual's brain. But I'm having all these like breakthrough moments right now. Yeah. I have to ask you a question. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so it makes sense to me all of a sudden. Is that why like maybe like some people like me better in my daughter actually better in things like I was better in algebra than I was in basic mm -hmm. math mm -hmm. because the numbers would like, I'd have to like slow down and look at the numbers to make sure I wasn't mixing them up. Right. My daughter's the same thing. She's not as good in basic math as she is in geometry right. because the formulas are not hard. Right. It's the numbers. numbers. That, and numbers and columns. The columns. Yeah. Yes. Oh my, no. <laughs> <laughs> but when we well, come I don't up have my regular, right but I don't have my regular come, glasses. If we come on. up with the right color, Overlay. Here are the numbers. They're in yeah, columns. Yeah, there's no way. And for many people, it merges together. It doesn't stay straight. Oh, and I would have never thought of myself. Certain colors can make it better. Yeah, an accountant would have made me like crazy. Right. Yeah. Certain colors. And what I'm doing is putting different colors down. Oh, I need to get my regular glasses, though. That's okay. That. I'm just showing you. The yeah, but this color. And looks certain nice. colors can make it better, but certain colors can make it worse. That's what playing with colors is dangerous. You can oversaturate the brain and create more symptoms without realizing it. Um, so interesting. So we come up with the right color. We make sure 
They're given a color, their overlays to go home, read with, to make sure that this is making a difference. And then they come back and then for their second appointment and we come up with a color that they can wear. The appointment for the screening is about an hour and a half, but to come up with the right color when you're wearing it um, is about a two hour appointment, two, two and a half hour appointment. That's trippy. This yeah. is like and so you many. have centers. I have centers all in what, 46 countries now? And um, I don't know, screeners all throughout the U.S. And those are listed again on Erlen.com. So people can go and they can get online and play with it. What's fun is on the um, website, we have colored glasses on top. And so you can change the page oh. and try reading with the Yeah, And that's classes. another question I have, because I remember even when I was in college, some, I remember, I can't remember where I heard it. Someone told me they had to change the background screen on their computer. Right. Now, could that have something, is that a similar type thing while you're typing? Like, but, but that's what they're doing. They're, ah. they're coming up with a concept. Um, so they change similar. it. Yes. So the concept for those who are in Berlin is to have it the opposite. Instead of a white background, a black background with white print. A lot of people are lowering the brightness. You actually yeah, yeah. up your brightness. Um, again, to compensate for it. But it exists all the time and you're paying a price. And Daniel, you know that they pay a price in terms of when their brain is under stress, their health and well-being, not just the performance. So interesting. You don't need to skip. So when we come back, I have a story. Uh, it's one of my favorite stories that I often okay. tell a lot about it before and after scan. And uh, you'll want to hear this. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're interested in coming to Amen Clinics, use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com. For more information, give us a call at 855-978-1363.